live. I think we're live now. Okay. But well, let's uh, find out. Yeah, I think we're live. Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening. Hello, friends. Welcome to another Together at Home webcast from Buffet Crampon. My name is Matt Vance. I'm the Woodwind Product Specialist. And um, I'm joined by two of my favorite ladies in the whole world and the music industry. Uh, you can see Lori Orr. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm glad you clarified it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, here we go. This is going to be a fun <laughs> afternoon, I can already tell. Um, Lori Orr is our New York showroom manager. She is also uh, in charge of professional double read sales for Buffet Crampon in North America. And uh, Lori is joining us from her apartment in Manhattan. Hello, Lori, thank you for joining us. No, oh, thank you for having me. This will be fun. Yeah, it's Maybe good we to can see. get through it this time. Yeah, <laughs> well, I wasn't gonna go there, but since you brought it up, if you, um, if you did join us for our double read talk, uh, I think it was a little over a month ago, uh, we had some technical difficulties, which I'll just leave it at that. And after the fourth or fifth time we got kicked off Facebook, we threw in the towel and said, well, we're just gonna try again later. And that was pretty much it. So uh, knock on wood, everything is going smoothly right now. Um, and uh, Lori, I agree with your sentiments. Um, I also want to welcome from the West Coast of the United States. Uh, she's joining us from San Francisco. She is uh, one of our esteemed Buffet Crampon oboe artists. Please welcome Brenda Schumann Post. Hello, Brenda. Hi, Matt. Hi, Lori. Hi, everyone. It is great. It's great to see you both. I've been looking forward to this since the problems that we had uh, a little over a month ago. Um, you know what I think would be would be interesting uh, just to, to touch on briefly, um, because both of you are in major metropolitan areas that have been greatly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, um, just to let us know uh, what the, the situation is as far as as music in your cities. And, uh, and what the future looks like or the immediate future and then long-term plans. Brenda, what, what, what do things look like for you around San Francisco? Well, there's music everywhere, you know that. <laughs> um, everything is canceled. Um, I've had nine concerts canceled so far out of 20. Um, my work is mostly chamber music. Um, I, the symphony is canceled, opera is canceled, um, I think until 2021, no Broadway type shows until January, um, assuming we can get back by then. A um, lot of happy discussions, a uh, lot of um, sharing of information. I know my ensemble, we haven't rehearsed together or played together in a while, but we uh, are having meetings and coming up with new programming and inspiring one another to play music genres that we've never played before. So the music is happening. And you've also been doing quite a lot of, uh, and you've pretty much migrated all your private students over to online teaching as well, correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So and how, and how has that worked for you? Fabulous. The rate of improvement is I'm not sure if it's because they have more time to practice or we're literally in each other's faces and not side <laughs> by side or not, you know, across the room. But um, I'm, I'm very proud of my students and I'm very pleased with the fact that some of them have no read adjusting experience and yet have purchased equipment. And just by showing me the reads and practicing how to scrape, they're actually, actually adjusting their own reads successfully. So I'm proud of myself too, for being, being able to tell just by hearing what's the problem with the read. Yeah, so it's, you know, there will be oboe players. <laughs> That's Very good to hear. Well, and it, you know, I think you bring up a good point too, that there, there have been a lot of positive uh, byproducts of this whole situation. And, and to hear that your students are, are prospering and doing well and, and focusing on skills maybe they would otherwise not have focused on if they were in a more traditional learning setting. I think that's fantastic. So Lori, well, how- They would have focused on it. It's just that it's not live and they can't actually see the details, but they're doing good. Yeah, oh, that's very good. So Lori, uh, of course, New York has been greatly affected by everything that's going on. Uh, the The announcement earlier this week, the New York, New York Philharmonic was uh, canceling the season until January. Uh, it, it sounds like uh, things are gonna be in a lockdown for 
quite a bit longer in New York. It is. It, um, <clears throat> you know, we didn't know. And they just put it out. You're right. This week, they said that. And it's, uh, you know, I don't know what I was thinking was going to happen. Uh, but that's, it's disappointing for people that live here, but we are being safe. Everyone is trying to be safe, which is the most important thing. So yeah, I've just been in my apartment, my tiny little apartment <laughs> for months, it seems like now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I'll tell you that um, uh, Lori and, and I have had periodic happy hours uh, to try and give her some sense of normalcy. Of course, in New York, it, it's a little more uh, restrictive than it is here in Florida, where they've loosened things up uh, for better or worse uh, down here a little bit. So uh, and, and I assume that the, the Broadway situation is, is still uh, pretty much locked down until further notice. It is. They haven't, I, I have not seen a date on that one yet, but yeah, they're in lockdown. They're not, they're not doing any Broadway. There's nothing happening. All my friends are, you know, out of work for the most part and mm -hmm. everybody's doing as much as they can on Zoom. You know, mm -hmm. the Zoom concerts and all the all the music that's come out of this and all the performance has been wonderful. Uh, it's still not as good as being together or seeing it live, but I'm amazed at how creative people have become with doing, you know, making these Zoom concerts work. I don't, yeah. I've not tried to do that. I don't know how hard that is, but I imagine it's not easy. It, I've been I've been involved in a couple of projects here in Florida, and it's it's fun, but it is challenging from a technical standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's another one of those nice unintended byproducts has come through this whole thing. And uh, so, well, um, I, I appreciate the updates from both of you as far as what's what's happening in San Francisco and, and New York. Brenda, of course, we're we're thrilled to have you joining us today. Um, we're we're here to talk about Buffet Crampon Group. Uh, double reads. Of course, Buffet Grand Pond, oboes and English horns. Uh, with the acquisition last year of Riguta, uh, oboes and English horns. That was a very exciting development for us at Buffet Grand Pond. And then also Schreiber bassoons, which have been a mainstay in the bassoon world forever. Uh, of course, you can, you can go into any band room and find a, a Schreiber bassoon uh, that serves those programs well. But Brenda, while we have you here, uh, of course, we want to focus on your expertise, your history with Buffet Crampon Oboes. Um, I, I think it would be interesting, and we touched on this a little bit when we had the, the broadcast previously, you've been a longtime artist for Buffet Crampon. Yeah, um, and, and, probably the first. And, and you are, in terms of, of loyalty and devotion to the brand, I'm not sure there is anyone that, that carries the flag for Buffet Grand Bon Oboes higher than you do. Um, could you maybe just explain to us a little bit or, or talk about um, your history with, with the brand and, and why you chose to play Buffet Grand Bon in the first place? Uh, well, Oboists are obsessed with sound. So of course that had to be a priority. Um, my work is a little bit more diverse than I would say in general for oboists. Um, I play a lot of different kinds of music, uh, classical, jazz, uh, American songbook, a lot of Celtic music. I'm an uh, improviser, you know, spontaneous improvisations, extended techniques. And I need an oboe that can do all of that in one concert on the same read. And Buffet has fulfilled that need of mine since the 80s. <laughs> and um, so I've been very fortunate to have discovered that I um, had access to an instrument that could um, challenge me in terms of uh, being an oboe player and having to develop all of these skills and allow me to develop those skills more freely without limitations. <clears throat> so, you know, that's the primary reason. It <clears throat> fulfills all of the requirements of classical orchestral music, which is of course the primary training that oboists receive um, and also allows me to go out and do everything else. And I'm very grateful for that. And the green line, when we, when we, when you want to talk about the green line material, saves a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. 
So now, I don't only play on the green line, but green now, line saves a lot of stress. Do, do you feel like the green line material aids the flexibility of the oboes or, or do you think it has more to do with just the, the reliability and, the, and the, the peace of mind having that, that material? Well, the, both of those things make for flexibility. <laughs> I mean, you can go into any environment and regardless of the temperature, which of course is uncomfortable in any case, but if it's cold, the degree of risk of gurgling, um, leaking is less because the green line material doesn't, um, it doesn't expand and contract. Um, so it's, it, it, it's less, there's less concern. So in addition to everything else that's going on, you're concerned, you know, you've got your read issues and your, um, you know, other environmental issues, the possible problems that might manifest on the oboe are not eliminated. Let's, let, let's get that clear, but they're reduced so that there's less preoccupation with what might happen. So I would say that makes for greater flexibility. <laughs> sure. Definitely. sure. Um, for those of you that are tuning in, um, if you're not familiar with Green Line, it's a material that, that Buffet Crampon uh, pioneered decades ago. And uh, it, was, it was born from, from a couple of different uh, uh, inspirations. Uh, one of them was, was the waste of raw material. Uh, when clarinets, when oboes were being manufactured, there was a tremendous amount of waste uh, that was coming from the African blackwood, uh, grenadilla wood, or as you may know it. And uh, so Buffet decided to collect that material and create a new material that, number one, was environmentally conscious and friendly. Number two, it retained the, the acoustic properties of the wood, but was very stable. And this speaks to what Brenda was talking about in terms of the flexibility and, and being able to have peace of mind when you're playing the instrument. And um, Green Line was born. And Green Line has been one of the, the uh, calling cards for Buffet Crampon in the professional oboe world. Um, Lori, I, what I think would be interesting for you to maybe touch on a little bit in the New York scene is the fact that green line oboes are very popular around New York uh, for very specific reasons. So maybe you could talk a little bit about, about why green line oboes and, and instruments in general are popular around, uh, around New York. Well, Brenda put it, I, I agree with everything Brenda said, but uh, you know, what I hear from uh, people coming in, clarinetists and oboists, is that it sends, uh, you're right, the stress level. It brings the stress level down. And I think several people have said, the, said to me, it's so freeing. They don't have to worry about the instrument. They can worry about other things, playing the notes. Um, they can just, you know, they get a lot of things. They enjoy that more. It's just more comfortable for them. And I maintain that I can't, once they may sound a little different, the wood and the green line initially, but I think people are going to sound the way they sound. I think you can make it so that you can't tell a difference or if there is any difference, it's very little. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's popular around here for clarinetists and oboists as well. So yeah, we I have, think I... there's Go a few, well, I could name a few people in New York that are playing the, our oboes right now. And it's the members of the American Ballet Theater, uh, Matt Dine and Ronnie Gad L. Um, with who else were we talking about here? Oh, Rob Jacoby, who plays some Broadway. Um, and of course, we have Matt Sullivan, who's our teacher here at NYU. He's professor at Oboe at NYU. And uh, Caitlin Walker, also an associate professor, uh, professor at NYU. So we have some fans in and around New York City, which, you know, they suggested to their students. So it's, it's been good. I, I, I am a huge Green Line fan. Now, Lori brought up a good point, Brenda, that I'd, I'd like for you to talk a little bit about. And uh, before we get into discussion of African Blackwood and, and your research with that and conservation, do you feel in your experience, because as you mentioned earlier, you play on uh, Prestige Green Line and you also play on Prestige Wood Oboes. Do you feel like there, there's a, a notable difference or is it, is it negligible? What, what's your opinion on that? 
Well, first I want to clarify that green line is wood. It's it's yeah. powdered wood. It's the same wood that an oboe that's 100% grenadillo or African blackwood is made out of. It's just might be pieces that were left over or pieces that had, um, you know, been discarded for some reason, but not that it's inferior wood. It's the same wood. It's just um, um, conserving the wood. And then it's, I think it's powdered and mixed with um, epoxy resin maybe, and that makes mm -hmm. it more stable. And it, um, so I have 100% Grenadilla green line, not green line, um, which has a somewhat different quality of the sound to the green line instrument. Uh, I mean, there's still oboes. <laughs> I mean, it's not like, they, I mean, every oboe, no matter who makes it, no matter what the manufacturer is, each oboe is completely different largely because of the particular reed <laughs> and also according to the particular um so you're seeing the messages that are coming through on my <laughs> phone i'm sorry um, oh no no we're not seeing that that's okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway um so every oboe sounds different so oboe players being obsessed with sound because it's it's a priority for us and i know it's a priority for every instrumentalist but um when we select an oboe we generally have to feel comfortable playing it have to feel nurtured by the way it feels to play it which is why i love my oboes um and and we have to be satisfied with the way that it sounds, not only to us who are behind the instrument, but we have to be satisfied with the way it sounds to the listener who is in front of the instrument. And those are two different things. So um, that's true for no matter what oboe you buy, no matter what brand it is. Um, so no, <laughs> I don't think that there's that much different. There is a difference because it's two different instruments or five different instruments, but it's still, what you've selected as your as your instrument and and again if i'm in an environment that's uh, outdoors you know and there's sun or there's cold or there's wind i am always going to choose the green line because then i don't have to worry about it i mean it's not perfect it's not like it's never going to get um slightly dysfunctional um but it's sure not as much as the 100% Grenadilla ones. And I, I think that brings up a very good point. And, and I started to, to talk about Green Line earlier in our conversation, and I, I, didn't, I didn't finish uh, the explanation of the material. As Brenda said, Green Line is African Blackwood. It's 80 to 90% African Blackwood combined with an epoxy resin. So the idea is you're getting the best of both worlds. You have uh, a, an instrument that has the, the acoustic properties of wood because it is African blackwood. But because of the stability of the, uh, the epoxy resin, the fact that there is no wood grain to that material, the instrument is not gonna change as much as you, as you would find with a traditional uh, African blackwood instrument. And so there's not gonna be that flex with the wood grain to where the instrument gets warmed up, then it cools off, it gets, uh, it gets moisture in it, and then it dries out. Um, any oboist will tell you, and, and Brenda has alluded to this, that one of the, the chief concerns as an oboe player is, is making sure that the instrument remains stable and, and you're always concerned about cracking. And with a green line instrument, uh, the concern for that isn't eliminated necessarily, but it's, it's much more unlikely to happen as far as any, any cracks that would happen. Now, I won't say they won't crack, but in my experience being with Buffet now for 15 years, I, I can count on one hand the number of green line instruments I've seen that have cracked. And, and I think that's a, that's a big testament to the quality of the instruments and, and to the reliability of the instruments. Um, Brenda, this I think is a nice segue into, into your experience with African Blackwood. Um, you have been an advocate for years. I've attended several of your discussions 
at the International Double Read Society conferences. They're always terribly interesting. I learn something every time you talk about this. Um, maybe give a little background as to, to why you got involved with this in the first place you're interested in it and 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 kind of walk us through uh why this is so important sure um so in i think it was 1992 there was a documentary called impingo the tree that makes music and it was a very enlightening show about uh, African Blackwood and the African Blackwood Conservation Project, which had just been established. And it suddenly hit me that it wasn't just about being a good oboe player, that there is a whole reality in East Africa of people who, um, in whose forests African Blackwood grows, of uh, what their lives are like and the potential, which I didn't know at the time, to discover the level of poverty that they um, had been and still are experiencing um, and how without those people and those forests, we wouldn't have oboes and clarinets and flutes and bagpipes and other instruments that are made specifically and at that time exclusively from this wood. And I began to study about it. And um, this is pre-internet, <laughs> so it was challenging. And um, in 1997, um, another, a, 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 a couple in Red Rock, Texas, uh, James Harris and Betty Stockbauer, they saw that same um, documentary, but I had seen it in 1992, maybe it was 1993, I'm not sure. And they saw it in 1997 and they um, are um, carvers, they carve African Blackwood. And they actually contacted the African Blackwood Conservation Project in Tanzania and create, well, I actually, they created the African Blackwood Conservation Project in Tanzania. And this is also pre-internet, everything was by mail, which could take like six months to, to get it. And the mail doesn't always get there. But um, so I connected with them and a lot of other people, um, including Alan Schwartz from the Mozambique um, Forest Center in Mozambique. And I learned a whole lot about what was going on. I was very interested in the spiritual connection uh, to the earth in those, that part of the world and to the tree itself. And um, I was tremendously fortunate because in 2008, I won a grant as a composer uh, to, I'm gonna just quote myself, to create a piece of music that would bond the people in whose forest African Blackwood grows with the people who play musical instruments made from that tree. And it was on the basis of that statement that I won a grant from um, the Ford Foundation and um, to actually go there to Tanzania. And then thanks with Buffet's help, I also went to Mozambique. And I got to see every detail from the search for and harvesting of this tree, which by the way, only grows one mile apart one tree a mile apart um, in general. And um, <clears throat> so the search for and harvesting of that tree and then the um, process by which it becomes, uh, gets to Europe and becomes a musical instrument. And I have other manufacturers and I'm gonna mention the name Howarth to whom, whom I am internally grateful because that manufacturer understood and appreciated as has Buffet what I was trying to do. And they actually took me to their um, factory in the UK. So I really did get to see the whole process. Very cool. Now we, we have some images uh, that you shared with me prior to today's session. Did you want to take a look at any of those? To... Sure. Okay. So, sure. So if, if you're not familiar with the area that Brenda is talking about, here's a look at it. So Brenda, you wanna talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so this is um, a map that just shows you 
basically two countries in Africa, and this is East Africa, Tanzania and Mozambique are attached. And the border between those two countries, just the place in the place where it's bordering, that's where African blackwood grows. And it also grows way up at the top of Tanzania where you see Arusha, it grows up there. That's more where Mount Kilimanjaro is. And it also grows down further down in Mozambique near, near Beira. Um, and that's it, that's where it grows. It's not growing anywhere else anymore. So uh, the, the, those are the only places African blackwood is growing uh, globally. Correct. Wow. Correct. Okay. I mean, there may be little places elsewhere, and I know that there are have been attempts, but because of the environment, that's where it grows. Sure. Um, we we've got a lot of people tuning in, and I, I do have a question from one of my colleagues that um, we can talk about um, with regards to Declan Lynch's question about Grenadilla wood. He was asking uh, African blackwood has other uses besides musical instruments, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think uh, furniture, oh, sorry, Brenda, go ahead. Okay, let me show what, what, what can you show the next slide, please? Sure. One of the, so let, let, let's just talk a little bit more about the tree so that you have a better understanding of it. So this is a picture of a five, a tree that's been cut at the five year point. So you can see that the black part is a teeny tiny little speck. And this here, I'm going to hold up a piece now. Um, so if you can just put me back. Yeah, sure. Hold on one sec. Okay, there we go. So this is a piece, just a little section, you can see it, and which I have thanks very much to Francois Clark of Buffet. This is a piece, you can see it's extremely dense. So it's the second most, I'll just block myself. It's this, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's the second most dense wood on the planet. The first most dense wood is ironwood and it doesn't resonate. This resonates. And so what happens, this is maybe, I'm gonna say this is a 200 year piece. So um, it takes 200 years for it to mature. Um, it can, if you can put up the next slides, um, sure. it takes 200 years for it to mature to become big enough to actually make a musical instrument. So that would be 12 inches in diameter at the very minimum. And just to tell you that if you see the trunk of this tree is gray, and that's because this particular habitat where it grows, the soil, you can see the soil behind the tree, it's the matching of the soil. So the, the trunk of the tree matches the soil on which it grows. And if you can put up the next slide. Sure, give me one second. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so this is a tree in a somewhat different habitat, same area, just different habitat, also in, in uh, Tanzania. Um, and as you can see, the soil is red. So the bark of the tree is red. Um, and let's just do one more. So I, well, hold off. So um, the question was about other uses. So the primary use in East Africa would be for sculpture. And this is called Ujama, which means family. And there's, can you see that there's a female figure here and it's larger than the others. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the smaller figures are all helping each other. They're all doing stuff to handing each other, giving each other things. And that's because we all look, al they all look alike, by the way. We all look alike. We have to help each other. And we all come from the same ancestor, which is female. Um, and um, it would be used for um, things that maybe tourists would wanna buy. So that would be a piece of an elephant. And, um, you know, I mean, most of us have cutting blocks, so these are little, you know, cut off pieces, things that tourists want to buy. There's something really nice, a fork and a spoon. Um, so in terms of the Makunde people, yes, there are different kinds of sculptures. You can see some behind me, I think. Um, the, the one, 
Uh, can you see there's a couple, um, a, yeah, a male, a female? So that would be like daily life. Um, but there's also ones that are very like, um, uh, it's called Shatani. It's um, examples of spirit world. Uh, so there's a lot of different kinds of sculptures that the Makande people uh, carve. And the Makande people only carve African blackwood. That's their wood of choice. So obviously as things have declined and there's fewer and fewer trees available, they're having to switch, but not necessarily switching to a different kind of wood. Um, now, furniture was mentioned, yes. Historically, and I do want to recommend to all of you that you go to the African Blackwood Conservation Project website, um, and it's blackwoodconservation.org. I'm going to repeat that, blackwoodconservation.org. And there is an incredible article, book, I don't even know what to call it. It's huge, and it's called The 5,000 Year History of African Blackwood by Betty Stockbauer, and it's extraordinary. So she starts in ancient ancient Egypt and goes all the way to right now, what's happening right now. Um, and so yes, uh, there had been a history of Chinese furniture uh, being made of African Blackwood and it um, became very popular in recent years to have a historical piece in your environment. And that's where the excessive and um, I don't want to get into too much, the stealing of trees and the excessive use of trees began to manifest and the tremendous shortage of the wood, which made it um, become necessary for um, organizations that are environmentally um, significant to put a lid on the um, export of the wood, which thankfully Buffet head, headed up an, or, uh, a group of concerned manufacturers of both stringed and wind instruments. And thanks to that effort, the restrictions were lifted from in musical instrument manufacturer. Um, so the furniture, the flooring, all of these things that have been really abusing use of use of the wood and also have been, I mean, let's just be truthful, a lot of wood had been stolen, that's been curtailed, but the musical instrument industry has the go ahead to continue to use the wood. It's a and small amount that the musical instrument industry doesn't use that much. Sure, right. comparatively to the other industries, right. that's right. And the full name of the wood is Melanox, right? Dalbergia Melanoxalon. But did you I practice that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Years. I, I'm glad you said it so I didn't have to. Can I just show one more, can you show one more slide? Because I do want to point, say one more thing about the tree. Sure. And, and, and that is that this is an incredibly unusual tree, which also is, beneficial to the environment. So the leaves um, are shaped, if you can see, um, the, the shape of the leaves and also the particular color of the leaves draws in heat. So it's actually a tree that helps to inhibit global warming. Um, and, and in Tanzania, for example, the people know that the snow on Mount Kilimanjaro is melting and the African Blackwood Pro Conservation Project, which is planting, um, and I don't, I mean, we can only get into how the tree actually regenerates, but there's so much research being done by that particular organization that what's happening is um, it's, it's being used to help to nurture the soil and bring it back. Of course, it's going to be 200 years before it actually happens. But, um, you know, the, the Ovo manufacturers have bonded together with Buffet Crampon and with string builders and string instrument makers to really be supportive of conservation. And I think that that's a really great and helpful thing to move us forward in preserving this tree and conserving it. And you've you've also been involved in in replanting the tree and, and replenishing the 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 forest as well, correct? When you've taken trips over there, 
So when I was there, I got to hang out with baby trees, <laughs> you know, and, and the only thing I actually did was I actually wrote down the names of oboe players throughout the world and buried the names on a tiny little piece of paper, you know, uh, in the soil around the trees, but that's as close as I got to replanting. I didn't actually get, I just, my job really was to educate the Africans. Mm. They had no idea. I mean, yeah. people, you know, you, you tell somebody who's absolutely, utterly destitute that this tree is worth a lot of money and they're going to look at you and go like, this is a really weird tree. I mean, come on. So my <laughs> job was actually to play for them. And I did actually create two pieces of music um, with African musicians who um, did not speak English, um, played... Um, uh, their own instruments. I didn't want to play with people who played Western instruments. So my music was based on their music and I had to learn how they played and what their music was. And um, I actually don't, I think I have one of those on you. There are some YouTube things that include them, but, but not the ultimate thing. I still have to do that. Well, and that's what I was going to get in. I was going to get into next. Um, your website has a lot of these resources available if, if people want to to stop by. If, if you could share with your with us uh, your website address so people can check that out. Sure, it's all lowercase, no hyphen. Brenda Schumann Post dot com. If you, I think the main page has uh, you can click on um, uh, articles. Uh, there's some interesting articles there. There's some uh, who, lectures, I think it says. Um, I haven't looked at my website in, in a little while. Um, uh, and so you can see about the show that I do called uh, Harvesting the Music Tree. And that's a, a whole, I mean, you've got what, like five slides here. I've got like 275 slides mm -hmm. <laughs> on my lecture performance about African Blackwood. Um, you know, what the people are like, what the environment is like, what the music is like, you know, and um, it was an extraordinary experience. I'd go back in a second. Um, those of you just joining us, um, I put both of those websites in the comments section, if you'd like to check them out. Brenda's website is there. Once again, it's Brenda Schumann Post dot com. Schumann is spelled S-C-H-U-M-A-N and then post. Uh, also shared a link there to the blackwoodconservation.org. That's the African Blackwood uh, Conservation Project. Um, lots of good yeah, uh, blackwoodconservation.org. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, okay. I thought I said it. yeah. Blackwoodconservation.org. Both of those. Yeah, uh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It came up. Uh, there's a link there. Okay. Um, a couple of. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank everybody for tuning in this afternoon. Uh, Schreiber bassoon artist Michael Rabinowitz is tuning in. He says to tell you hello, Brenda. Michael, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Hey, we, hope, we, we hope you're doing well. Also, um, you mentioned earlier Francois Clock, our president and CEO of Buffet Crampon USA. He is uh, tuning in as well, and he sends his warm regards to both of you. So, uh, Francois, thanks for tuning in. Thank um, you. Um, Lori, uh, maybe... Both of you could talk a little bit about um, the fact, Brenda, that you have visited our showroom before. And, and those of you tuning in, if you're not familiar, the, the Buffet Crampon New York showroom is, is kind of our North American headquarters for professional double reads. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a lot of the prestige oboes. We have a lot of the Orfeo oboes, uh, the Prodige uh, intermediate oboe. Uh, we have professional Schreiber bassoons. Um, Lori, could you talk a little bit about um, the opportunity the double reed players have to come by the showroom to try some instruments? And then Brenda, uh, I know you've had experience doing that, so maybe uh, you could follow up with, with your experiences uh, going to visiting the showroom. I've had Brenda there. We've had, a, we've had a good time there. She tries everything we have, but that's what we're there for. I mean, I don't know. There are are a lot of oboe shops around, but I'm gonna probably have more oboes in my showroom than most anybody would have. And it, and it's, so it's easier to come to me, you know, if you're visiting New York City or how you wanna just make an appointment and come in. 
we'd love to have you. It's been, you know, it's a great place to be. We'll treat you nicely. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, we have uh, we have the largest amount of, of Orfeo, Prestige, Prestige, oboes that around. And we so you can come in and try anything. We used to have somebody there that can adjust one. We do have somebody there that can do a little adjusting for you and make sure that everything works. But it's just a fun place to come, and it's your your place to check out whatever you want to check out from buffet, not just oboes. We have other things as well, but um, for oboes, we have more than anybody else. Let's put it that way. And and Lori, you're located right in the in the heart of Manhattan. We're right in the, uh, Midtown Manhattan. We're two blocks north of Macy's, uh, so we're really really Midtown, one five three West Thirty Sixth Street. Uh, between Broadway and Seventh. Well, and the the really cool thing about the showroom too is is with the with the ac with, uh, acquisition of Riguta, we expect to have some of those oboes available for people to try. Of course, we have the Schreiber bassoons. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit more about uh, things that you're looking forward to uh, with those other brands, as well as just the you know the the opportunity to reopen. Right, the opportunity to reopen would be really nice. <laughs> <laughs> trying to do that. But yes, we're very excited and, and happy to have the Rigata family part of our buffet crampon family. That's that's really nice. Um, Lu Lucretia Kraus is their manager in Paris and they do have a showroom there, but uh, we're excited to have them here. Um, Rigata is a, a family owned from and has been in making oboes since 1922. And, you know, started with Charles Wigata, then went up through Roland, and then Claude, Roland's wife, and now it's Philippe. But they, you know, they have, well, they have a student instrument called Delphine, and then they have an intermediate called Riake, and then they have the three models that are, that I mostly know about are the Model J, which is, um, I think the most recent one, the expression, and then the oldest one is going to be the classique, which is apparently that's the one that mostly you will see in America. This is probably more 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 or better known in Europe than it is in the U.S., but there are some around, and they have a beautiful sound. They're a beautiful instrument. Um, they also make they do make them. We're not going to have this, I don't think, but they do make English horns. They play have the oboe de more in a bass oboe you know they make oh. everything so we can't wait right now we don't have anything but we will have some soon once this pandemic sort of clears up a little we're hoping to have more things for for everybody to try and, and we're very excited to, to have the relationship I, i've known philippe yeah. for years and years uh I one of the... you have <laughs> sorry sorry brenda <laughs> I've known Philippe longer than you have. And I just want to say that Philippe is a, an incredible creative spark in the oboe world because he has been experimenting and, and is so devoted to the improvement and the changes and the development of his oboes. And um, I just think that he is a tremendous asset unto himself to buffet and the rigata oboes, they're, 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 they're diverse. And, you know, I mean, just as there are two models of professional oboes from buffet, the Orfeo and the Prestige, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which used to be the 3613, which is well, the one that is. I... Yeah. Oh, it's called the Prestige 3613. Correct. Yeah, that's that's oh, the fancy okay. name. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, so um, he's got those three professional. Yeah. Got a lot of his his perspective is from the from the point of view of oboe players. Mm -hmm. I mean, giving us what he thinks would benefit us, and so. I wish he was listening. <laughs> Are you there, Philippe? <laughs> well, he, he may be, and, and he'll be he'll be able to view this, you know, on the YouTube channel 
um, yeah. later too. And he's but, hilarious, by the way. Well, because he's <laughs> the, the, the he's got a fantastic sense of humor. The the thing I love about Philippe is, is Francois Clock introduced me to Philippe years ago. I think it was at the TME, uh, TMEA conference in San Antonio. And this is when I had just joined the company. This was in 2006, 2007. And I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anything about oboes. And, and I'm sure when, when Philippe met me, he thought, you know, oh, here's this, this dumb American saxophone player. And, uh, and he was very gracious and very kind. And, and, and in addition to his, his extreme knowledge of the instrument and, and his innovation. He's just a wonderful person. And I'm thrilled that he's he's involved with Buffet Frempon now. I, I think that's that's nothing but great news for us. Um, getting back to the availability of the instruments at the New York showroom, as Lori mentioned, uh, currently we have Buffet Crampon oboes available, the Orfeo, the Prestige in wood and in Greek line. We're hoping yep. to have some of the uh, Ruguta instruments in later this year. Brenda, you have been to the showroom and you have been able to try instruments firsthand there. Could you talk a little bit about the experience of going there and trying instruments? Well, you have my picture on the wall, so that's always very nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's why you should go there. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've posed in front of my photo, so. You know. <laughs> we have an autographed version on our wall. Uh, whenever anybody, hey guys, anytime anybody visits the showroom, Lori takes a picture of you and posts it on Facebook. <laughs> and you can get your picture taken with Brenda's picture. You can. She'll, 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 she'll it's a very nice like, picture. Look who showed up at the, at the showroom today. That's so it's right. Very exciting. It's very exciting. It's very, it's very nurturing. You know, it's a very nurturing place. Lori is a very nurturing person. The showroom is huge. It's it's not like a little teeny tiny place. It's really big with big windows and um, it's laid out really nicely. And except when you walk in through the elevator, the first thing you see is brass instruments, I think, unless she's changed the decor. Yeah. <laughs> you it's know, where we have the biggest places to put, I mean, tubas yeah. are the first thing you see. <laughs> like you go down the elevator, it's like, whoa, that's a tuba. <laughs> <laughs> And they're beautiful, by the way. Everything is kept really shiny and nice. And and there's a separate, you know, like um, when you come out of the elevator on your right, there's a great big room with comfortable chairs, and you know, you can just practice and 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 play and you know, hear yourself and get a perspective. I mean, it's not sound. Um, insulated or anything it's it's a little echoey um but you get a perspective on how you play and you know maybe how you project and um you know it's just a nice experience to have time and you know as i said earlier every oboe is different so when she's got a collection there or you know a lot of samples make sure you bring reads <laughs> don't forget your reads that's true <laughs> it's like don't don't say I came to see your oboes and but I didn't bring my reeds. <laughs> I have reeds for you, but bring different reeds. You know, like reeds that you might play to play in an orchestra. If you play different reeds for different purposes, I don't. Everything's, you know, if I have a good one, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna play it no matter what the um, the genre of music is. But um, um, it's, it's a nice environment. Yeah. Lori, if someone, you know, again, we don't know when we're going to be able to reopen the showroom, but if someone does want to, to come by, they do need to make an appointment, correct? They do. They do. And especially now we just, we haven't been open for a few months. So we've got to get ourselves back up and running once this pandemic calms down a little bit. But um, yes, and I forgot to mention earlier when we were talking about the showroom, we, we do a lot of events there. Our artists can come in and play concerts there and recitals. And um, I mean, you're welcome to do that too, Brenda. But you, you, we set up, we do have many concerts that we have there. We've been trying to do, or we were until this pandemic, we were doing two, at least two or three a month um, for all the instruments that we have. So. Uh, it's a chance for you. They're all free. 
anybody's welcome. They're free and they're, they're beautiful concerts. I mean, our artists sound great. So <laughs> it's really, they're, it's wonderful. And it's, I love having people in there. We loved having you, Brenda. But yeah, we, we do, we love having people there. We do have like a little living room set in there in a way you can just sit down, we can chat, you can try things out. And we do, next time we'll do this, Brenda, we do have curtains that we can close in the front of the showroom, which does make it a little more dead. It's not quite as boomy. Uh, so that might, we could try that the next time you're there, just so you can see. Which I hope will be soon. I hope, yeah. yeah. Uh, Michael Rabinowitz actually uh, chimed in. Uh, if you're just joining us, Michael is one of our Schreiber bassoon artists. And he mentioned that he had a great CD release party there not too long he ago. He did. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. Mike, yeah, I think um, Michael had groupies. <laughs> uh, I, that looks, that's very good. <laughs> Not um, surprised. Go, going to our comment section, um, Francois uh, chimed in here. I'm just going to read this verbatim, so bear with me. He says, uh, mentioned that Roland Philippe's dad had a second prize in oboe performance at the Paris mm -hmm. Conservatory, which I think is still the only oboe maker with a Paris Conservatory prize. He was also a great man and incredible maker, hard and demanding, which was very intimidating when I had to bring him an oboe, I made the check. And, <laughs> and, and Francois is alluding to the fact that um, he got an opportunity early in his career working at Rubuta and working with Philippe. And, and I know Francois holds Philippe in very high regard and, and feels a, a great affection for him as well. It's a great story. Thank you for sharing that, Francois. Yes. So, um, if you are just joining us, uh, we've got a few more minutes. Uh, we're broadcasting live from Jacksonville, Florida, New York City, and San Francisco. Um, I'm being joined by Lori Orr, who is our New York showroom manager and our professional double read sales manager. And in San Francisco, uh, Buffet Crampon oboe artist Brenda Schumann Post is joining us. She's been talking about African Blackwood conservation, about Green Line instruments, about her her role in, in the conservation of the Mpingo wood or uh, Grenadilla wood as it's known by many. Um, if you missed any of today's uh, presentation, you can of course find it here on our New York Showroom Facebook page. This will also be archived on our brand new YouTube channel. It's called Rhapsody Live presented by Buffet Crampon. And uh, I believe we have 14 or 15 videos up now, uh, spanning all of the, the different instruments uh, that encompass Buffet Crampon uh, Buffet group from uh, flutes all the way down to tubas. Uh, I invite you to go check that out. Uh, this broadcast will be up on that page shortly, either later today or first thing tomorrow and, and lots of other uh, webcasts that you can check out as well. Um, we are also keeping an eye on the comment section to see if there are any questions that anybody has for Brenda or for Lori. As I mentioned earlier, I've posted um, the web addresses for Brenda's personal page, as well as the uh, African Blackwood Conservation Project, which is blackwoodconservation.org. And uh, I also put Lori's email address if you'd like more information uh, regarding uh, scheduling an appointment to come by our New York showroom. Did we lose Brenda? It's like, she might have, it's like she might have frozen up. Hello, Brenda. Yeah, we was frozen for a moment. Oh, okay. We're glad you're back. Yeah. Uh, Bre Brenda, I, I want to ask you before we wrap things up today, um, one, of, one of the things I think is so remarkable about you as an oboist is your devotion and affection for improvisation. Um, as, a, as a saxophonist who, who plays a lot of jazz, of course, uh, that's uh, kind of comes with the territory uh, playing saxophone. It's not something you typically associate with being an oboe player. Um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about how you got into improvisation and, and maybe who some of your, uh, your inspirations and influences are. Wow. Okay. Thanks for asking. Uh, well, I was in a class called Improvisation for Classical Musicians in graduate school, and I was terrified and... I got very angry at the teacher for um, demanding that I improvise, even though I was taking the course. Mm -hmm. And I started to play whatever I felt like playing to express my emotion. And the class started applauding. 
<laughs> and cheering. And that broke me, broke, helped me to break through. So, um, you know, improvising is, you have lots of different ways that you can improvise. Um, one does not have to know harmony and study it from a jazz harmony perspective. Um, I do not play piano. So that has been very challenging for me. I wish that I had more physical mobility um, with um, the knowledge of harmony. Um, I primarily use my ear. And I'm very fortunate to have, uh, I have an accompanist who mostly is not an improviser. And so with her, I play classical music and American songbook. And I have been very blessed to be um, interested in ethnic instruments and ethnic oboes. And whoa, way back, 1997, I made a recording called Oboe of the World. And it is on Spotify and Apple and all of that. Um, and it's basically playing the oboe, not ethnic oboes, but actually playing buffet oboes um, and imitating the genres, the sounds, the styles, the techniques of ethnic instruments. So that would be the Shanai from India, the Zorna, uh, the, uh, the Piri from, um, gosh, I'm forgetting the countries, Korea. Uh, I mean, it's, they're all over the world. There are ethnic instruments that are double reed instruments and they're like shams they're um but they are oboes and so embracing that and um, extended techniques which are part of the language of the oboe um i made that cd and from there i just kept playing and practicing and i have an ensemble called sonic forest sonic forest meh, i hope people get it <laughs> because musical instruments are made from trees and other organic materials. Um, and it's uh, violin and upright bass and um, percussion. And we make stuff up and we play a lot of Celtic music and um, we're all composers. So we teach each other things that we've composed and it's all by ear and nobody ever writes anything down um so i'm working on funky town right now <laughs> <laughs> because the violinist said she has a lifelong dream that we, sonic forest would place funky town so all by myself i'm trying to you know i think that'd be a great opener for the, <laughs> the next time you know, I was just gonna play that high E flat, everybody. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to wail on that high E flat. <laughs> so when I mean, obviously, we don't know when things are going to return to normal. But is that something you guys are working on for your next performance no, or performance yeah. suit? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Oh yeah, you know, I'm trying to inspire each other, you know, I mean, the violinist and the bass player, they're not gonna play classical music. They don't read music. And I'm trying to learn to read um, changes. So I have a couple of tunes that are fairly simple that I'm memorizing and I'm, I'm you know, I'm improving. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we also make stuff up. I mean, a lot of every, almost everything I have on YouTube is improvised and they're not great recordings and a lot of them are really old and I'm a way better oboe player now, but um, there's one called Oboe Diversity Playlist and it's four pieces. So it starts with um, the Vivaldi Gloria and it ends with um, a piece called In the Moment, which is definitely was in the moment. So there's, you know, it's cool. It's fun. Well, and that's one of the things that I, I think is so interesting is the fact that you really are, when we, when we say improvisation, that can mean many different things. It can mean, as you, as you mentioned, you know, playing with harmony and playing over set chord changes, but you truly do improvise. I mean, it is literally spontaneous composition that you're doing with. with oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Should, you, you can go onto YouTube and just listen to In the Moment because the drummer started drumming and we just all start. I think it was amazing. That was yeah. only two years ago, 2018. It was on Earth Day 2018. Oh, very so cool. Listen to the whole four thing called Oboe Diversity Playlist. 
just go to Brenda Schumann Post on YouTube, or maybe it might be under Sonic Forest, and it's called In the Moment, and that's totally in the moment. And I'm, I'm you know, so. Very cool. Um, yes. So Brenda, one more time, give us, uh, give us your website address so people can check you out. Sure. It's, it's without any hyphen, brendashumanpost.com. And you can look at what we do for senior citizens by clicking on, you know, slash senior citizens. Uh, HTM is always at the end. You can look at the, uh, it's called, brendashumanpost.com slash sustainableafricanblackwood.htm. That's about um, the show that I do about African Blackwood. There's stuff about ovals of the world with all kinds of pictures of ethnic instruments. You just look under, uh, and, and I apologize if I'm not exactly right about what my website headings are, but one might be lectures and another one might be um, Sonic Forest and um, articles that I've written. Um, um, and then um, blackwoodconservation.org is the African Blackwood Conservation Project, which is nurtured and supported by Buffet Crampon and many of the other oboe manufacturers and the string manufacturers, string, string um, builders, string instrument builders, and um, uh, Mezimbit Forest Center, M-E-Z-I-M-B-I-T-E, -E, is another place that you might want to know about just because they do a lot of conservation for African Blackwood. Um, can you think of anything else I left out? Well, uh, Michael Rabinowitz is uh, asking about Star Trek. Oh, <laughs> Michael, okay. Well, that's under articles. It's called Where No Oboist Has Gone Before. Yeah, and, and we're, we're, we're running out of time. I, I strongly encourage yeah, that's you- That's a good one. Tuning yes. in today, check out Brenda's um, involvement with Star Trek. It's terribly interesting. And, and, <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, it's under articles, that I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, so plenty of resources there. Fantastic. Lori, uh, anything you would like to add regarding our Pro Double Reads or our New York showroom? You can go on our, our Buffet Crumpon New York showroom Facebook page. And we do, I do post everybody that comes to visit for the most part, everybody gets posted, has pictures and videos of our concerts and recitals. Uh, you can see what we do there. Um, and we hope to be back up and running soon. Uh, so when you're in New York, we're willing to travel again, hopefully people will start going by. But yes, please check us out on Facebook and come make an appointment, come visit. Yeah, and Lori's contact information is on the showroom page. I also included it right. in the comments section. Uh, one more thing I want to tell everybody about before we sign off today. Um, the Together at Home webcast series is running uh, weekly now on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That's 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, next week, we will be joined uh, by Kristen Moore from Powell Flutes. Uh, it, it's a nice uh, segue into what we've talked about today. Kristen's going to be talking specifically about Powell wooden flutes. And uh, you'll want to definitely turn, tune in for that. She's going to be joined. Uh, the, the title of her session next week is Boston to Belarus to Brazil. And she's going to be joined by Powell artist uh, Adrian Greenbaum and Jane Lenore, both of uh, whom play uh, African Blackwood Powell flutes. Um, so I, I'm really looking forward to that, just to hear how that material, which isn't generally associated with flutes, um, it is uh, how it works for, for Powell flutes. And, and I think, uh, think that'll be a really interesting conversation. So uh, ladies, I'd like to thank both of you for joining me today. This has been a fantastic and fun session. And um, I wish you both good health and welfare and uh, I think we should plan on doing another one of these maybe in a, in a month or two. Absolutely. Sure. So, all right. Maybe live in person together. That would be even better. That would be. Yeah. So anyway, that again, thank, thanks to everyone that tuned in today. Uh, this video will be archived on our YouTube channel, uh, Rhapsody Live by Buffet Grand Pond, if you missed any of it. And uh, we look forward to you joining us next Thursday. Uh, on the New York showroom page. Thanks very much.